In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Repent and believe in the Gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. It is Thursday, the 29th of February, 2024, second week of Lent, and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Priscilla Kakungu Timbo, celebrating her birthday today, special birthday that comes only once in four years, from New York, United States of America, text for us the first reading. Patrick Keige Mwangi, who also celebrates this special birthday that comes once in four years from Nairobi, Kenya, takes for us the responsorial psalm. Father Chiemeka Utazi, a selection of Don Bosco, working in Ondo, Nigeria, proclaims for us the gospel and preaching the word of God for us today is Father Simbarashe Oscar Musa, a Salesian of Don Bosco, working in Wange Diocese in Zimbabwe. Let us pray. O oh God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself that caught up in the fire of your spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes his flesh arm, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of wilderness in an uninhibited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately corrupt. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the mind and try the heart to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is taken from Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, 3, 4, and 6. The response is taken from Psalm 40, 5, a, B. And the response is, Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Blessed indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path with sinners, nor abides in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, 
that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Not so are the wicked, not so, for they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind, for the Lord knows the way of the just, but the way of the wicked will perish. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Gospel acclamation is taken from Luke chapter 8 verse 15. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man, named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades. Being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is being comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who will pass from here to you may not do so, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, allow me today to especially dwell on the Gospel passage that reminds us that our fundamental vocation as Christians is the vocation to love. Yes, we can sing, we can dance, we can speak in tongues, we can spend hours in prayer, but our faith is best expressed in how we live our lives and how we take care, especially of those who are most in need in our society. We heard the famous story of Lazarus and the rich man, a story we've heard so many times, but every time that we listen to God's word, it must have a new message to speak to us. And so we must always listen to God's word as if we are hearing it for the first time. Even if we are listening to a famous story such as this of Lazarus and the rich man. The story begins by presenting two characters to us. One is named, that is Lazarus, and the other one is not named, rather he is described. We are told about his financial status, he was a rich man. We are told about the color of the clothes he used to wear even. He used to dress in purple, which was associated with wealth and royalty. And we are told he used to dress in fine linen, the quality of the clothing he used to wear. We're also told that he used to eat very good food. Isn't it interesting 
that so much detail is given about somebody whose name we are not given, who did not have made sense that Jesus would just give us the name of the guy rather than give us so much fine detail about what he used to wear, what he used to eat, what color he used to dress. Is Jesus not trying to put across a message to us? Is our identity perhaps dependent on the things that we have? Am I my possessions? Am I identified by people by what I have rather than who I am? Could it be that perhaps my own self-worth and my own self-identity has become so much dependent on what I've accomplished as a person to the point that people may not even know my name, but they identify me by the things I have and the things I've accomplished. Isn't it funny that some of us even get offended when we are not addressed using our accomplishments? If somebody calls me Mr. So-and-so, I say, no, 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 why are you downgrading me? I'm doctor, so-and-so, I'm engineer, so-and-so. Yes, that is important, but let it not be as if Minus my accomplishments, I'm worthless. Minus the acknowledgement of my level of education, I feel I'm worthless. Minus the acknowledgement of the wealth that I've accumulated over time, I feel people have not recognized who I truly am. I am a person before I become a possessor of the things that I own. If I feel any less worth, if people do not acknowledge my net worth or other things, then maybe I actually have serious self-esteem issues. As the famous saying goes, some people are so poor that all they have is money. Our identity is more than the things that are used to describe us. Or maybe we are being too harsh on the rich man. We are not told that Lazarus was holy, we are not told that the rich man was evil. We are not told that Lazarus' poverty was a result of something beyond him or maybe it was a result of his laziness. We are not told that the rich man was rich because of ill-gotten wealth. We are not told whether he was a thief or he was an honest man. But what then are we told? We are told that Lazarus used to long for the scraps that would fall from the table of the rich man. Another interesting detail that we are given is that the dogs were coming to lick the sores on Lazarus' body. Why is this interesting, one may ask. It's interesting because if you've ever observed the behavior of dogs and other animals by extension, when an animal is wounded, it licks its sores. They tend to do this not only on themselves, but also on other animals that they are connected to. For example, if you've got two dogs, one is wounded, not only does it lick its own wound, but the other dog also comes frequently to come and lick its wound. It's as if the act of licking is therapeutic in a way. It's as if I'm lessening your pain by licking you. I'm lessening my pain by licking myself. And so dogs coming to lick Lazarus' wound could be interpreted as an act that the dogs were able to do about the situation of Lazarus, while the rich man could actually not do anything about Lazarus' situation. Are we not worse than dogs then when we are insensitive to the plight of the poor around us? God calls us to notice the wounds and the sores on each other's body. They may not be physical sores on the body, but people are wounded in so many ways. Some are emotionally wounded. Do we take notice of their situation? Some are mentally wounded. Some are traumatized. Some are heartbroken. What am I doing about the sores on my neighbor's body? Am I doing something about it or am I leaving it to the dogs? How many times do we ignore the plight of the poor? They are lazy. I worked for this. It's mine. Let them be. Let them make their own money. If they can't, it's their business. Well, it's the duty of the government. We are called to notice the situation of our brothers and sisters 
and do something about it. Faith is lived. Faith is practical. And so is love. Remember the call of Matthew chapter 25. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was homeless and you sheltered me. I was sick and in prison and you visited me. Let us do something about it. Let us do something about the plight of our brothers and sisters in their need. Are we not famous for being generous in church and yet we do not notice our starving neighbor? Are we not famous for being wealthy and we are doing nothing about the poor that we pass by every day without doing anything about their situation? Their condition alone should be enough to prompt us into action. They don't have to come and beg for us to be able to help. If we've got our eyes open, we know they are there. We know where to find them. We know what needs to be done about them. Let us be Christians who manifest our faith in what we practically do. Interesting that after death, the rich man speaks to Abraham and pleads with Abraham to send Lazarus. Listen to this. He pleads with Abraham to send Lazarus. So even in death, the rich man sees Lazarus as a mere servant, someone who could be sent. And he starts noticing Lazarus' existence after death because prior to death, we are told he was there waiting for something to fall, but he did nothing. But now, after death, he notices Lazarus and starts realizing his importance. Are there people we ignore only to remember them when we need them? Or sometimes we remember them when it's too late? Sometimes we ignore the presence or the existence of people who are of no value to us until we deem them valuable or needed in particular situations. God is telling you and I today, love while you still have the opportunity. Feed and clothe and shelter the poor while you still have the opportunity. Forgive while you still have the opportunity. Ask for forgiveness while you still have the opportunity. Repent while you still have the opportunity. Because the day will come when it will be too little, too late. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Thursday to you, and happy ending of the Reap Year Indicator. Thanks be to God. Long have I waited.